oh, yeah, I have a business selling electric cars. And they're like, oh, wow, yeah, they're coming, aren't they? But <laughs> then I try to say, no, they're here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 19th episode of Let's Talk About Electric Vehicles. My name is Teresa, I'm an economist and in this podcast I try to answer general questions about the electrification of transport systems. My goal is to teach you something new about electric cars in every episode. I hope you enjoy it and with that being said, let's talk about second use markets and used electric vehicle dealerships. Buying used gasoline cars at a dealership or from a private seller is very normal. Many people do that. Since the used gasoline car market is widely established, it is relatively easy to find out an approximate resale value of the car. Customers can compare different options and make their own trade-off decisions. The situation is different though for used electric cars. I became interested in the resale value of electric cars when I started to dig deeper into the whole total cost of ownership analysis. If you can remember, in episode 10, I think, I talked about how hard it is to make a reasonable cost comparison between internal combustion engine vehicles and electric vehicles, because there are, on the one hand, many factors that depend on the particular circumstances in the area of observation, and on the other hand, there is just a lot of uncertainty involved, and the resale value is one of these uncertainties. Many of the total cost of ownership analysis that I reviewed assumed that electric cars depreciate faster than gasoline cars. Sometimes it was assumed that electric cars lose in value even twice as fast as gasoline cars, which, of course, makes them worse off in a comparative cost analysis. So I was wondering, is that really the case? I mean, how do you know? What, what do we really know about the value of these used electric vehicles? Unfortunately, I failed to find answers about this in academic research. By the way, if you know of any study that investigated the used electric vehicle market, please send me an email. And also, I will, of course, keep on searching. So, but what is the difference between gasoline cars and used electric cars? I would say the biggest difference on top of the general differences between the EV market and the conventional automotive market lies in the evaluation of the vehicle's condition, especially the battery's health. As I said, I couldn't find any sound market research, but I thought I could start my research journey by calling an electric vehicle dealership and asking about their practices and their market observations. So I ended up calling the founder of Go Electric. Go Electric is a recently founded used electric vehicle dealership in Calgary in the Canadian province, Alberta. The founder, Jim Style, was kind enough to answer some of my questions and I'm really excited to share his answers with you. First of all, let's give you some background information about Go Electric in Jim's own words. We actually conceived of Go Electric in the uh, spring and summer of 2017. And that was a result of a lot of people coming to us and saying, we would like to convert my, I would like to convert my wife's car into an electric car kind of thing. And, and, and it wasn't really that practical from the point of view of how much it would cost. And it wasn't really um, affordable to buy a brand new one. So we got this idea that we should look into buying the cars from California because we'd heard that there were the incentives down there made the the auction prices really, really low. We kind of got this idea. We thought, well, we can buy these cars in California, bring them up here and sell them. The idea was that we would do that in order to pay for our hobby of, of converting the cars to electric, the classic cars. When we got this idea, we bought these cars, we sold them, sold two of them and made some money and thought, okay, buy just a little bit cheaper if we can get them from Washington State and Oregon. So those are the three, we get them from all three of those places. They all have the federal subsidies and a state subsidy as well. So the, 
that brings the resale price down considerably on the off-lease vehicles. Right away, Jim brings up a very interesting point. He buys the used cars at auctions at places where the electric vehicle incentives are the highest. So when he imports the used cars from California, they are up to ten thousand U.S. dollars cheaper than if he would buy them here in Alberta. This is very smart, but it also comes along with some risks. I don't go down there, right? I just push the buttons on on my computer. There's some risk involved because there's no mechanical inspection that's done. But for an electric vehicle in particular, the really the only major risk is in the battery because the motor and drivetrain they virtually like have no wear, no maintenance. You know, you don't have to worry about whether did they change the oil or anything. There's just nothing. Yeah, some of the cool that, features of electric cars that the motor doesn't oh, yeah, uh, yeah. break that easily. You know, for us, it's not as much of a concern as for other people who are buying some of the gas cars that are at auction. But we we basically have no way of knowing the the state of health of the battery when we buy the car. No way and, at all. No, not not unless we were down there and we were able to plug into the vehicle. Like you can look at the uh, dash. I'll have a picture of of the dash. And you might be able to tell the range and how much battery capacity is left. You know, maybe the range is 100 miles and their battery is 90% full. Then I can I can use that as a ballpark indication of the, whether the battery is basically about what it should be. Mm-hmm. But in, in some cases, um, you don't even get that picture to go from. But with time, he hopes to establish trustful relationships with his business partners. I mentioned earlier that there is, that there are not many electric vehicle dealerships yet. Go Electric is one of Canada's first electric vehicle dealerships. So where can you get a used electric car? I asked Jim about his competitors. There's only two that we know of that are strictly EV dealerships. There's a fellow in uh, Victoria who owns a company called Motorize, and he's been in the business longer than us especially in the last year, ordinary car dealerships are recognizing that there's a significant demand for for these used electric cars in BC. So now a lot, some of these places, I don't know how many they're selling, but they certainly have quite a few, probably five or six dealerships that are fairly well set up with the EV inventory. Now we know that some regular car dealers start selling used electric cars as well. But I was wondering if you need some more electrical knowledge in order to adequately assess the battery's health. Jim is an electrical engineer, but can you really trust the ability of a regular car dealer? Basically, the best way to test it is to drive the thing, to be honest. You drive the car from full until empty, which is what we do, and you keep track of how many kilometers the car goes for. You you sit down in the car and you just drive around until it's empty. This is well, how I can imagine it. I'll be I'll be quite honest. We do that a lot because we're all driving these cars every day. Like I drive one every day home and back and take them home on the weekend and drive a certain car and check it all out. And I don't even own a vehicle myself anymore. And we also can plug into the car with uh, software and use the onboard diagnostics to evaluate the health of the battery from the onboard diagnostics. There's no other way that I know to do it other than just drive the thing, which to me is more accurate. It doesn't mean a lot to the customer to say, oh, this battery is at 85%. They just want to know what's the range and what's the range going to be like in five years. You know, All vehicles we've had, the batteries are either about right well, they're all about right. Sometimes they're awesome. Sometimes maybe it's just maybe a little bit disappointing, but we've never had like a big disaster. Over time, with getting a feeling for the different car types and the different battery types, Jim hopes that the assessment of the battery health will get easier. But by using his method of driving all of his cars in real life to test how far they can go with one charge, it's actually a good approach to minimize the customer's concerns about the driving range. Speaking of which, 
I wanted to know what the typical customer concerns are. Sadly, people want to know how do you charge it. I think they, most of them know, of course, that the idea is that you charge the thing at home. Mm -hmm. But people have very little idea what's involved in that. And they're, you know, I'm an electrical engineer, and so I never really ever had this feeling. But, um, you know, they're a little intimidated by the fact they might have to hook up some high-powered thing. Oh, they don't know that they can charge at level one. Exactly. So then oh, okay. You, yeah, like if I had a, if I could hire a giant blimp to fly over the city and just put my logo on there and say, charge your car off the wall outlet, call now. <laughs> oh, they're just like oh, amazing. You know, they say, I heard that, but I didn't understand how that could be possible. And it it just takes longer, but it's yeah. actually better better for the battery itself in the long run. Yeah. And I would say more than 50% of our customers, that's where they're going. Is they're mm. just charging off level one. Yeah. And the winter driving is probably the hardest conversation to have. Winter because, driving? Well, yeah. Winter, like the range and you know, like you, the range of the, of the battery in the car in general goes down quite a lot in the winter. So I tell them. 50% is like the worst, worst, worst case scenario. You leave your car parked at the airport, unplugged, and you come back three days later, and you know, you're only going to have 90 kilometers range instead of 180, and you got to be able to plan for that. But I also say, look, if you leave your car parked in the garage where it's not very cold and it's plugged in, then when you get up in the morning and hop in your car, not only will the car be warm, but the battery will be warm. You won't lose as much range when you have a warm battery when you start off. Even the, especially for the people who don't even come down here, but people who do come down here and are interested in electric cars, even for them, they just don't know what they don't know. They can ask some general questions, but it's like, it's such a, it's, it's sort of a change in, uh, it's a leap of faith for people until they talk to enough people, other people, folks who have owned one to to just say, okay, great, I think I can I'm gonna buy one. But that's mm -hmm. kind of my overall experience that I get. People I get kind of blank looks from people when my when I sell them, oh yeah, I have a business selling electric cars and they're like, oh wow, yeah, they're coming, aren't they? But <laughs> then I try to say, no, they're here. But it's, it's a little scary for them. Who would have thought? The biggest concerns of used electric car buyers actually roots in basic misinformation about electric cars in regards to how to charge it and about the effect of cold temperatures on the driving range. Coming over to my next question. As an economist, the fact that the used electric vehicle market is so full of uncertainties makes me actually very excited. In a market that is currently establishing, with almost no suppliers and almost no product variation to compare prices, I'm especially interested in how to set the price of used electric cars. Therefore, I asked Jim about his way of setting the price. When we were starting out, we would be looking at, okay, so what are the what's the price for the vehicle in BC? And then what can we buy it for in California? And then is it possible to make money on those vehicles, enough money to keep our business going? In the end, um, we still have to price our vehicles so that somebody in Alberta is not going to go all the way to B.C. and buy one. Some of our cars are cheaper than the cars in D.C., and some of them are maybe a bit more expensive. So I guess in the end, our approach has changed because we realize that if we if we buy the cars wisely in California, we do kind of have a like a spreadsheet to uh, take into account all of our costs and everything and figure out a, a price for the vehicle. We also have a couple of, you know, like a rule of thumb for about a diff price difference of about $1,000 per model year and about $500 per 10,000 kilometers of mileage on the vehicles. Sometimes we have to apply that if somebody wants to purchase a vehicle that we don't have on the lot. 
we have to um, apply a formula for a vehicle that we don't already have yet. But otherwise, we, we basically sort of apply a certain formula to the price of the vehicle, and then that ends up with our sale price. Now that we have a rough idea of how the price of used electric cars is determined, let's come back to what I said at the beginning of this episode. The total cost of ownership analysis oftentimes assume that electric cars depreciate faster over time than gasoline cars. Whether or not this is the truth is hard to tell due to a lack of market research. But I asked Jim about his personal beliefs. So keep in mind that this is pure conjecture, of course. Nevertheless, I found it very interesting what he had to say. Yes. Do you want to know about depreciation? It's yes. Very- what, do you, what do you think? It, do electric cars depreciate faster than gasoline cars? You know what? Um, uh, the newer, the new ones, the uh, like, the newer long-range EVs that have now just been coming out in the last year or two, like the uh, the Chevy Bolt, for example, or even the Teslas, which have been a bit longer. Um, those ones are really in short supply and they depreciate quite slowly. Uh, hybrids are also holding their value really well. But what I would call the uh, first generation electric vehicles, which are cars that were built with uh, basically commuter cars, like a little smart car, that kind of thing, with a, mm-hmm. you know, a range of 120 kilometers kind of thing. And uh, those those cars are depreciating a lot. And I I feel that people don't recognize their value. So fine, they they depreciate a lot, and anybody who buys one gets a really good deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like the first electric cars that came out in like 20, let's just say 2012 or so was when like the Nissan Leaf came out. And then there was a few other ones that came out in like 2013 and 2014. That's only maybe five or so years from now. But in the in the first few years, those cars depreciated drastically because there was just very little faith in the batteries. And mm-hmm. in the last few years, depreciation of all electric vehicles has started to level out. But I feel that they will they will continue to depreciate faster than a gasoline vehicle for quite a while because the technology is just changing all the time. That's the batteries cool. are getting better. Uh, the, the sales of new passenger vehicles in North America is slumping quite badly right now because um, people are, a lot of people are holding back thinking that their next car will be an electric car, but they're not quite ready yet. So people are hanging mm-hmm. on to those gas vehicles for the moment, but the resale value of gas vehicles is just is gonna become really quite something. Yeah, it'll be like trying to buy a used typewriter, you know, that will be a dime a dozen compared to a laptop. It's so great to have these insights from Jim Stahl, the founder of Electric of Go Electric, a used car dealer in Calgary, Alberta. I learned a lot. I hope that you did too. I learned, for example, that a good strategy for electric vehicle dealers is to import the vehicles from places with high subsidies. And that a good way to test the battery quality, aside from using the regular software, is to just drive around until the battery is empty and see how far you can get. Also, there is still a lot of misinformation about electric cars. Many people don't know that you can charge them in a regular outlet and many people are concerned about the battery performance in the winters. As for the value of electric of used electric cars, to determine the price, Go Electric orientates on a few other dealers that offer used electric cars and Jim Style thinks that the Electric cars still depreciate faster than gasoline cars because the technology is enhancing so fast. But that could also be a good thing for consumers because they can basically have a great used electric car for less. I am excited to follow the future development of the used electric vehicle market 
and I will of course follow up on this topic as soon as I find out more. I uploaded the entire uncut version of the interview for my patrons on my Patreon. If you like this podcast and you would like to contribute, you can support me by following the Patreon link in the show notes. I love providing weekly education about electric cars for free and that won't change, but in exchange for a little donation starting by $1, you can get access to a secret podcast that contains some additional material. You can be the first to listen to the regular episodes and you can also be the first to contact me if I screwed up and can be the first to ask me to revise my episode even before it is publicly available. If this is something that you enjoy doing and I actually I really appreciate it. And my patrons also get some behind the scenes shots. So some little insights of how I create my episodes. I hope that I could teach you something new today. You will find all of my references and contact information in the show notes. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me for feedback or for topic suggestions. And let's talk about electric vehicles again next week. Have a wonderful day and bye.